thanks everyone for joining um and yeah we're looking forward to kind of talking about the collaboration and the, the great kind of work that's been going on between both Czech and Baramo um before we get started yet yeah, um, just to introduce myself and kind of a bit about what we're going to be talking about today so um I'm Ross Power one of the product managers at Czech um and I'm joined by Anka and Tassos from the Czech side um, as well as Matt, who's hosting as the Czech icon. And then we're also joined by Talio and Mercia um, from uh, Baramo. Um, so yeah, just to kick things off, so we're going to basically be talking a bit about the SSI stack and where the SDKs fit in that. Uh, then we're going to go into a little bit around um, how Baramo and Czech have been working together and, and what this now enables Czech's partners to do and also what it means for Baramo. Um, then we can talk a little bit about what, what kind of our aims were at Czech and, and why we chose to go down the line of uh, leveraging the Bramo SDK um, in our work. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit around kind of, um, yeah, what, what this means and why this drives further adoption across SSI and why this fight drives further adoption, um, hopefully beyond SSI into, you know, different areas of um, Web3 and identity and so forth. Um, and then finally wrap up with a bit more about kind of what's coming next with our collaboration. Um, so yeah, to kick things off, um, let's start with um, Italo. Do you want to introduce yourself and share a bit about what Veramo is all about? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a protocol engineer um, at Veramo. Um, and before saying what Veramo is, uh, 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 it's good to highlight that it's an open source project that is totally agnostic. And we take that as a core value. Um, uh, so it's very important to remember all the time that. Um, so Viramo is a framework that makes it easy uh, for anyone uh, to use cryptographically, cryptographically verifiable data in their applications. And when we say verifiable data, um, we are talking about uh, a set of things which are hard to implement and time consuming for developers. Um, basically, we are talking about W2C standards like uh, uh, the IDs and VCs, um, many protocols and specifications. Um, it's a frame, framework written in, in JavaScript, but it doesn't mean you, you need to write your app using JavaScript because uh, the framework, framework offers uh, uh, APIs using open API standard and command line tools uh, where you can access all the implemented features. Um, and, and it's good to remember that uh, uh, Veramo is a result of years of learnings uh, from from the various teams, uh, identity teams we had we have at, we had at Consensus Mesh. Um, so we are talking about projects like Uport, uh, which were very known in the community in the past. Um, and I, I'm new, I'm new to the the Veramo team. Uh, uh, Marisha here with us, uh, uh, he found this project with uh, others like Simonas that is, is here and here. Um, and they can speak better than me about this whole experience that we had in the identity teams. Um, but even being new to the team, um, uh, I've been working with Veron for two years so far. Uh, we implemented Serto uh, a year ago using Veronmo, and it was our main, main SDK. Um, and I can say by my experience that it was a smooth to use it, um, even with all the, the versions uh, being released, um, uh, we used most of the, the what uh, the framework offered at that time, and um, uh, it was easy to use. Um, and by the way, that was the time uh, when I was at Certo, when I met you guys from Czech, and thank you, Ross, Tobias, Tazos. Uh, it's good to, to, to be here with you uh, talking. Um, mm. And yeah, I remember you convinced us to run the, the, the check in node, one of the first running the check in network. It was a good time to remember. Yeah. I remember, like, you were one of the first few when we were just coming out of the Outlier Ventures Accelerator um, last year that he got engaged. Yeah. And I think, I think for a lot of people on the call, uh, I think, I think Itzel is sort of like, uh, maybe being too humble about it, but Veramo and its sort of like history goes very much to almost the beginning of a lot of blockchain projects because uh, I think it's been through many sort of like different avatars and iterations. Uh, but I think this this uh, whole sort of like stack, uh, I remember when I first got into self-sovereign identity 
uh, one of the first uh, projects that I played with was Uport. Um, and, and to this day, I think like you know that's that's the name of your that's that's the name that is inherited uh, Uport from 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 that project, right? So in a way, for me, it's also looking back at a lot of history and a lot of like you know how I began my own journey in SSI. Sure. Yeah, uh, Moisa, do, do you want to, to tell a bit of the this history here at <laughs> Francis from Uport? I think it's important to hear you. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, as 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 mentioned, Uport was maybe one of the first uh, self sovereign identity projects in this uh, in this space. Uh, its initial goals, I think, were to uh, make it easier to um, do social recovery mechanisms on on uh, Web three, so to provide easier onboarding solutions and, and things like that. But then it, it uh, very quickly transitioned into. Uh, this self sovereign identity space as um, as we we uh, most of our values were around like user owned and user controlled data and and uh, user privacy so um, uh, from from that stack um, Veramo was born <laughs> from the learnings of viewport actually uh, where we we realized that we needed a common framework to uh, unify all these uh, protocols and and standards that were uh, evolving and appearing and shifting. Uh, so we needed something very uh, open and flexible and extensible uh, to go forward. And this is uh, yeah. To, to, the, to this day, we uh, try to hold up these uh, these values in, in the Veramo framework as well, so that. Uh, the um, all the difficulty in, in getting started in the space is uh, is reduced for for newcomers and um, to to be able to create some some network effects between uh, various companies that uh, use this this kind of technology. That's one. brilliant. Um, yeah, thanks, Mesha. That's great. So I guess before we dig a bit deeper into um, you know where. Gramo and Czech fits the stack. Um, perhaps Anki, you could kick us off with a bit of an intro to the Czech and um, yeah, and where we're sort of at the moment, where we're heading. Sure. Uh, so obviously, for I see a lot of like familiar faces on the call. Uh, last year, when we launched our network, I think we had pretty much just the basics, uh, which is being able to create bids on on the ledger. Uh, but from very early on, we had sort of a view that we wanted to support multiple types of credentials. We wanted to support multiple formats uh, that exist within the industry. And, and part of this thinking was driven by the fact that uh, right now, the, the way that this space sort of like, you know, works out, there's a very clear divide between the, the set of like identity vendors who work with Hyperledger Indie and its anon creds um, and a, a separate sort of like, you know, vendors who work on like every other sort of like credential format and standard that exists in this space. Uh, now from very early on, like to, to in, and I always thought that's bad from a user experience perspective because what it means is you might have had to download maybe five or 10 different applications on your mobile phone to be able to handle different kinds of decentralized uh, identity credentials. Um, so when we started down the journey of like, we've launched our network now, we want to make the experience of building on our network as simple as possible. Uh, we looked around at the whole sort of landscape of various different SDKs and formats that exist. Uh, and one thing that like sort of really stood out to us and where we really liked what the Veramo offering and the Veramo sort of open source project does is that uh, if outside of like the Anon Preds world for many, many different kinds of credentials and algorithms and so on, there's, there's a, a support built in for that. And it's a very modular sort of architecture. And so it's Lego-like in the sense that uh, not just ourselves, but any person who's building some kind of decentralized identity method can, can build on top of Verama. Uh, so we, we really like those various different aspects of it. Um, we've also sort of simultaneously been working on uh, aspects of like the Hyperledger Indie credential standard and decoupling that from Hyperledger Indie, which I'm sure we can keep for a different call or perhaps later on. Uh, I think the 
there's there's probably a lot more to talk about on our, on our side on the Veramo journey that we had. Uh, but yes, fundamentally what we are trying to achieve is that uh, people shouldn't need to, for example, have to download multiple kinds of wallets, multiple kinds of apps, uh, just to be able to interact with these new digital credentials that are coming up. Because if you make it complicated for people to use decentralized identity, they're just not going to do it. Um, does that maybe give a bit of an overview? I don't know if like uh, Itano or, <laughs> or somebody else wants to chip in on that. I think that's a great, great way, great way to begin, and a great segue into the kind of the first um, topic. So I think most people on the call I can see um, are quite technical. So I think we can probably move through this fairly fast um, to kick things off. But just for anyone that's less so, um, question kind of for Mercia: um, Where do you see SDKs and kind of um, the Veronica SDK itself sitting within the SSI stack? Um, I know in the blog that we put out and the kind of the way that we've been communicating to our community and beyond is kind of Brahma is kind of sitting um, as a bridge between the application layer and the utility layer. So kind of taking those kind of layer twos and layer threes. But maybe you could just share a bit more on that kind of topic around um, what SDKs are and, and where they fit. Uh, right. So as uh, maybe some folks here know or uh, was already mentioned, uh, the, the, the SSI space right now is full of uh, various protocols and uh, standards and uh, Types of keys and signature suits and and uh, stuff like that, and it's it's uh, very hard to tie them up together into an application uh, when you want when you just want to get something done. So that's uh, that's something that we wanted to achieve when we started the the, the Veram project is to simplify this whole process into uh, maybe a simpler set of packages or maybe uh, ultimately even just one package that uh, encompasses most of the. Um, most of the low-level protocols needed to um, to to get started in the space and, and to, to build applications around the, these technologies, and this is where um, you can uh, you we, you can see Veramo and the the collections of plugins that um, um, are uh, bundled with it um, as uh, as an SDK uh, a software development kit where you can just like put it into your app and then uh, start using these tools without having to integrate them manually. So uh, a large part of Veramo is actually glue code uh, to uh, tie together all of these different implementations and standards into, in, into something that uh, looks uh, a, a little bit more coherent and um, makes a bit more sense to, to, to a newcomer. Cool, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Any kind of questions from anyone on the call at all? Um, I can see some friendly faces here. I don't know. I don't want to dox you, but nice to see you here. Yellow dot pink. Um, cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a great, great way to begin with that. And I guess um, one kind of question leading on to that is how do you see SDKs in terms of um, driving standardization? I guess in terms of the way that standardized SDKs can drive drive adoption um, of SSI, kind of what do you see as the benefits of, of a standardized SDK? Well, it, it makes it easier to to just get started because standard Im implementation is, is fairly hard, like especially for a lot of the, 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 the complicated bits uh, where uh, cryptography or privacy is, is involved. Um, it, it's, it, it would be almost impossible to uh, start from scratch or to even like uh, as as we see in our day-to-day -day, it, it's even hard to collect the existing tools out there and and bundle, bundle them up in into a coherent package so um the the the, the adoption here uh is in my opinion greatly uh helped by the fact that uh, packages su such as veramo exist so that folks can just um start using uh, the already existing protocols and then see how to improve instead of trying to implement everything from scratch, maybe um, doing like half implementations or um, even like uh, wrong implementations sometimes and, and uh, running up against interoper interoperability uh, issues then. So uh, having something um, there to, to get you started, uh, I think is, is the, the, the way to go for adoption. Perfect. I think um, a very good example yeah. of this is maybe to uh, highlight 
Uh, I think one of the things we really liked about the Veromo SDK is that it uses a lot of the standardized libraries that have been created by the Decentralized Identity Foundation, which is uh, one of the core open source standard like groups in this space, which includes a lot of like, large and small companies. Uh, but it has certainly been a challenge, I think, in some other decentralized identity ecosystems, especially in hyperledger areas, what we've seen is, uh, for example, there are many different flavors and profiles that need to be accommodated for. So even though they are nominally using the ARIES framework, uh, they, they like the, 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 the sort of implementations and different SDKs, the building blocks through which you then build, let's say a mobile app or a web app, uh, they had deviations in how they interpreted some of the rules or they had deviations in how they implemented things. Uh, and I think it really makes it challenging to then go and stay up to date with a lot of the latest developments that happen. Uh, and so that's why having and relying sort of like, you know, SDKs that work on these industry standards and stick very closely to it is super important. For sure. Um, great. I think that kind of nicely leads us on to question for um, perhaps Tassos, so you can help with this one as well, and Anka, um, around what does the Veromo SDK project actually enable our partners to do now? Um, and this kind of feeds nicely into the kind of the architecture that we've used, how we've leveraged the various diff packages through um, Veromo. So yeah, perhaps Tassos, um, quick introduction of yourself, and then maybe you could share kind of what we've um, been able to do through this. Yeah, of course. Um, hello from me as well. I'm Tassos. Um, I've been working for the almost past year uh, with Tech as a senior blockchain engineer. And yeah, basically, uh, I uh, architected the um, our SDK version that uh, we leveraged to the uh, Bramo setup for uh, Tech. Um, yeah, so generally, um, the uh, Veramo SDK for Tech as a setup allows us to create and manage keys for signing and encryption through a great variety of key management systems for different flavors and implementations based on different environments or maybe uh, tech providers uh, as well. And of course, different kind of uh, uh, encryptions supported by the wider uh, um, Web3 and uh, SSI um, stack. Um, so another thing is uh, you can actually uh, create and update uh, the IDs, like identifiers, the docs, and yeah, that's mostly, uh, that was quite uh, a challenge uh, and one that we actually found out uh, that we could also contribute upstream to Veramo, uh, which was uh, a different, uh, compared to the spec, a different way to update um, uh, these docs. So that's one of the uh, many uh, contributions done and more that will be done as well. Um, so yeah, um, moving on. Um, we can also uh, issue different uh, kind of verifiable uh, credentials in the JWT uh, format. And uh, also working on uh, more on that end as supported upstream as well. Um, we can also verify and uh, that goes hand in hand with uh, verifiable presentations and verifying uh, those as well. So yeah. Um, anything to add? No, I think that's a, a kind of a great, great summary of what we've been able to do. And I think towards the end, we can come on to um, the expansion of credentials that we're looking to support as well. Um, looking at JSON LD and, and Anon creds with checked. Um, cool. So taking a step back a bit, um, and this is we both to Anne Krantasos, I guess um, interesting to kind of talk through why we chose Baramo and um, yeah, what, why we ended up feeling like it was the best route to go down. Um, so Anka, just to kick things off, um, we decided in January this year that we would do a bit of a research survey on our partners and try and get a good understanding of what tech stack our partners are using, um, which SDKs generally are being used. And um, yeah, we, we settled on 
Gramo largely because of this. So perhaps thank you could kick off with a bit around the server we ran and, and why we wanted to build it using a JavaScript and TypeScript based. Sure. SDK. Sure. Uh, so I think if I don't know how many people are familiar with programming on this call, but uh, one of the most popular languages that is used uh, is, is called JavaScript. You might have heard of this in other terms like TypeScript or you might have heard of something called Node.js. If that's all, uh, if, if that's all gobbledygook to you, that's fine. Uh, but the but the main point is that like this is the language that a lot of like websites are written in, as well as the language in which a lot of mobile applications, as well as browser plugins and extensions are written in. Um, now, early on this year, we we did a research project with a lot of our vendors on which kinds of SDKs do they currently use, which kinds of credential formats do they use, and which kinds of languages do they use internally uh, when building their applications and when building their technology. Um, and what it sort of like validated for us is the knowledge that uh, it's not just JavaScript is not just a popular language just generally, globally for, for development, uh, but also quite specifically for a lot of the partners on Czech network. Um, and one of the things we were quite keen on ensuring that we could, that we were able to do is to be able to utilize this kind of technology in, in web applications, in mobile applications, in, in, in a whole range of like different scenarios. And so when we started looking at the uh, the types of SDKs, some of them are written in languages like Go, some of them are written in Python, some of them are written in .NET, um, you might have heard of like, you know, some of these term terminologies. Um, but we felt that like going with something that was JavaScript based would give us the widest sort of range. And I remember actually, this was around the time of the Internet Identity Workshop, which is this um, uh, conference that's been running for almost decades at this point. In, in San Francisco that we went along to uh, with the Czech team. We wanted to build something and demonstrate how people could use our network for that. Now, once we narrowed it down to that particular language, uh, we wanted to find something that was flexible, powerful, uh, where we could uh, build in sort of like an easy fashion uh, in, the, in the simplest way possible so that we could go and, and release features early. And that's where Passos, I think, uh, as, as sort of like a senior blockchain engineer on our team, really stepped in uh, along with many of our engineering colleagues and did an assessment across many of the different SDKs that exist. So Tassos, can I hand over to you a bit more on uh, how we narrowed down into Veramo? Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, we... Uh... After conducting uh, so while conducting this uh, research, um, we came up with the uh, results that uh, Veramo is uh, is a very is a highly flexible and modular um, SDK, and it's very easily composable. So that means that uh, with different complex workflows, uh, there is a rich plugin system. Uh, and different kind of packages that we can leverage in different orders, uh, not very very highly uh, coupled. So um, that's uh, really beneficial for us because it's possible to also uh, define our custom uh, our custom ledger specific um, way of uh, of functionality and transactions as well. Uh, hence, we uh, also decided to add our uh, own specific uh, Cosmos um, layer as well. Um, and that was actually uh, very uh, smooth um, uh, from a developer experience uh, perspective, because uh, for people that are uh, a bit more nerdy with uh, the design patterns, it was easily uh, conceivable that it follows a strategy pattern and an abstract factory uh, pattern, which made it quite easy to build um, to, to bring uh, and define your own functionality based on different uh, ledger specs. Brilliant. And I guess one of the things that I remember um, you talking about um, 
test was, was just how seamless and easy the developer experience was for you. Obviously, um, praise to Mercia and Vitalo for that because of how easy it was to collaborate with them. Um, but is there anything else that you would want to add around kind of why you found it so much easier when you begun the journey of um, you know developing with Bravo as an engineer? Um, yeah, um, of course. So um, the thing is that uh, as a bundle uh, perspective, uh, while building a, an application as well, uh, there's quite uh, a lot of uh, if, if quite a lot of different environments and different use cases as well. But uh, the good thing is that there are uh, also uh, out of the box uh, implementations of uh, CLI setups like uh, uh, command line uh, interface applications or for different uh, kind of environments or platforms. So you can easily uh, start with, the, uh, with an upstream or native uh, CLI provided and go along as you wish, uh, adding or subtracting different uh, plugins as, me as mentioned. Uh, that also is easy to define in different kind of um, um, environments. I said on client, like web client browser environments and uh, and JavaScript specific uh, component based uh, um, frameworks, which is uh, one of them is the React and maybe move to uh, React Native as well for mobile development. I think another thing to highlight here perhaps is uh, obviously our objective is to uh, you know drive adoption of uh, more people using Czech network. And so for example, if you're using Veramo, and I'll uh, come to you guys in a second. Uh, one of the one of the sort of like very useful things about it is if there are uh, developers who are currently working with DIDs on Ethereum or DIDs on Web or DIDs on a whole bunch of like different other methods that exist. Um, there's the support for that in Veramo, and so one of the other like you know things that's that we saw as quite as a positive is that, hey, this is fantastic because developers who are currently perhaps already using other DIG methods with very little effort in terms of like the differences or the changes they have to uh, make in their own web applications and mobile applications, they'll be able to consume Czech network as well. I think trying to reduce the barriers to entry uh, through, through, through processes like that, A, help developers support a wide range of different networks and standards. Um, and obviously we are trying to do a couple of like things that are quite differentiated and perhaps like, you know, new feature sets that are coming in. Uh, but it also has to, you know, what I said at the beginning about not wanting people to have to download different applications to be able to hold their credentials. I think it's quite important to have SDKs that can not, not just handle one type of credential or one type of network, which a lot of these software toolkits are these days, um, but things that allow multiple networks and multiple credentials to be supported. Um, Italo, uh, Richard, maybe like you wanna join, you know, sort of chime in over here. Like, I think it's quite interesting the way that you've constructed this and you've been able to get, you know, uh, multiple DID methods to be able to integrate into your application. And I think if I'm not wrong, uh, you were one of the early creators behind some of these DID methods as well, right? Yes, that's true. Um, so um, early on, we saw the, the DID method space growing and growing. So everyone was inventing their own DID method. And we, we saw a need uh, to uh, for, for folks to be able to compare or choose different DID methods based on use case. So that's why, um, uh, quite quite early, we decided that the the framework that we are building should be agnostic to the type of DID that that's being used. So um, we um, we are leveraging some some tools that we uh, had uh, previously donated to the uh, decentralized identity foundation. Uh, one of them is the DID Resolver. Um, so this is a library that can. Um, can abstract away the, the resolution process of, of DIDs to DID documents. 
so um, we are using this heavily in, in Veramo uh, as well. And then in Veramo, we created some abstractions to be able to um, control uh, different aspects of a DID. Uh, so to update the DID document, uh, essentially. And this is uh, where uh, the, the Czech team has, has uh, made the... Uh, quite a number of contributions as well, which uh, I'm very thankful for. <laughs> um, and um, the, uh, not, o not only on the DID level, but we realized that uh, there's a lot of space for exploration uh, in, in the, the types of keys and the types of credentials and in the types of protocols. And that's why it, it was uh, kind of like a decision making itself that we had to make a, a flexible framework and, and uh, modular and, and extensible to be able to support all of these use cases. Uh, because for us, the, the framework itself was initially not the goal. Uh, it was uh, uh, just a tool to, to allow us to experiment in this space. Uh, I guess it still is, but we dedicate a lot of time in, uh, to developing it uh, nowadays. Yeah, and it, it's good to, to see uh experience like, like this happening, uh, uh, um, seeing you guys uh, using the Ramo and implementing your own uh, deep provider. Uh, this is something that we are expecting for the community for, for a long time. Uh, and it's finally happening more often, right, Marcia? Um, uh, we have people implementing did Eon and uh, coming with suggestions to improve uh, did Ether. Um, um, so we are open and um, uh, we are a small team right now. We can't build all the deep providers that we have. Um, uh, each day there's, there's something new in this ecosystem. Uh, so it's good to, to see that at least people understand now uh, our positioning on being agnostic and uh, giving space to uh, anyone implement their own deep provider. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the things that we've noticed in our, our kind of partnership network is on having a lot of conversations over the past month, we know that there's obviously a lot of people building with areas with JavaScript, with Akafi, with .NET, but Veramo was one that definitely kind of excited people for the, the forward-thinking approaches you're taking. Um, some people on the call here as well are already leveraging it. Um, and yeah, it's definitely turning heads and getting people excited by it, the simplicity and, and ease you've gone for. Um, and I think that kind of brings us on to one of our final questions. Um, I guess we've kind of talked about this throughout around how this integration or this this um, kind of partnership drives um, adoption of Veramo and Chex. But I guess, Anchor first, anything you'd like to add around kind of how this partnership helps to drive further adoption of the Czech network and um, kind of our, our plans going forward with this? I think it gives uh, the... Uh... The, the model or like the, the way that it has been designed in Veramo, the, the way that the Veramo toolkit uh, allows multiple ledgers and multiple DID methods to be integrated. I think um, it has been quite instrumental in informing uh, people on other ledgers, for example, in the Hyperledger Indie and Anoncreds world, where typically they've worked on a single blockchain framework or single type of ledger. I think it has informed a lot of knowledge in those fields on how to construct something that is flexible and can be expanded and, and tries to support like multiple kinds of things. Um, but what, it, what has also been exciting, I think, is the, the way that Veramo itself is constructed and some of the work that we did in building the, the sort of like the Lego bricks that go into our Veramo integration, um, they're quite reusable. And so what's been quite interesting and exciting is to see people taking those Lego sort of like building blocks for the Veramo software toolkit and then building it into other applications and other use cases. So um, we, uh, we have sort of like an event coming up like in the next week on, on Monday as well where we are demonstrating an example of that. And I think that really shows uh, the power of like a lot of these open source like technology stacks, how you can uh, share different, so different sorts of uh, experiences or different sorts of like, you know, knowledge across different projects and, and bring it along. So I think what's been also exciting is to see the, the ease with which we built the integration into Veramo 
I think a lot of developers are excited about that and are looking at, hey, we want to do this ourselves. Um, uh, we can take this Lego sort of like, you know, toolkit and we want to start building it into our own SDKs. We want to start building it into our own applications. And I think um, that's been very interesting to see. Yeah, that's a great, great overview. Um, I guess, Italo or Mercia, um, what about from your side in terms of how you see this um, relationship helping to drive kind of adoption of Baramo beyond free on check? Um, I, I think uh, so. One of our um, continuous needs, let's say, as as uh, framework developers, is uh, is the need for for feedback, and it's been wonderful to uh, to hear um, you know some of the some of the pain points and some of the the wins that you guys have had uh, while um, trying to use Verama in your own stack. Um, the, the other, of course, is the the having um, a growing community and the community of contributors, not only of users, uh, which uh, which enables like everyone that's that's participating to to uh, reap the benefits of um, of everyone else's work. So if someone uh, you know you, you you guys added the you know a new DID method that's now compatible with the the rest of this the the space, so that everyone can start using it without even um, without needing to to implement uh, things uh, on their own. And um, that I think there's uh, one other thing that I that I wanted to add. So um, we we're not um, trying to to position. Veramo in in you know like against a, any of the the other uh, the frameworks or or uh, protocols we are trying to be integrators in the space so um, we uh, even from the start we added some of the the Aries principles to our uh, to our own backlog and the, the, some of them are uh, uh, starting to 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 be adopted as well and um, we we view the the framework and the work itself as as uh, like an, an integration between these things uh, uh, instead of a, a competition between frameworks. Yeah, I, I very much actually... agree on that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, that that perfectly leads us into kind of the final part of this, which is around um, yeah, what's next and what we're currently working on with this collaboration. Um, I'm sure many sure many people have seen kind of the blog we put out, some of the content we put out around what you can do now. Um, and that's very, very much focused on JSON credentials or JWT proofs, um, proof formats, um, but what's next? So perhaps um, Italo or Tassos, you could share a bit about what you've been um, discussing in the past week around um, status list 2021 and, and JSON LD support. Um, so maybe Italo, maybe you could share a bit about what you're working on there. Sure, yeah. Uh, last week, we, we uh, me and Tassos, we, we had a meeting, we uh, decided to, uh, collaborate in this implementation for the, the um, uh, credential status um, and basically in the past months we defined all the, the interfaces and APIs uh, that will be uh, provided to, to manage the, the verifiable credentials status um, and we are starting the first implementation uh, that is the stat status list uh, 2021 um, and we will have also the implementation of a status uh, manager, uh, just like we do with the the deep providers currently. Uh, so basically, your uh, Veramo agent, your your uh, uh, application that is using Veramo will be capable to understand uh, multiple implementations of um, uh, uh, credential status. Just to, to explain what is a credential status, it, it, it's basically what uh, allows you to to issue a credential and later change uh, its status uh, by instance uh, doing a revocation of the credential. Uh, so it's something very useful, and um, uh, I believe that the community, uh, the Kuveram community, is expecting for that. Um, and yeah, so uh, we have this implementation started, the status list 2021 uh, will be uh, released soon. Uh, and also this um, uh, uh, capability of dealing with more than one type of uh, status method. Yeah, yeah perfect. Um, no, we, we're really looking forward to, to that and supporting that. And I guess that's on the kind of the JSON side. Um, 
and which is which is interesting i guess looking at the um the other side of this is around kind of anon creds and the revocation associated with that um perhaps anki you could share a bit around what we're exploring for supporting revocation um, of anon creds and how we're looking at the resource module that we have built on check to, to do this sure uh so i completely agree uh with what richard said like we want to support uh, a kind of like you know revocation that is used within uh, these uh, credentials that are supported within the Veramo SDK. Uh, and obviously, we we started at looking at like you know supporting multiple credential formats. So within that, we released something called the resource feature functionality or the resource module. Uh, just to recap, it helps people store on a ledger what does a credential look like? What are the different fields? What do those fields describe? Um, being able to store perhaps visual representations of those fields. And um, uh, the, the upshot of this is that the various different uh, types of resources that are stored in Hyperledger Indy using this credential format called Anon Creds also include something called a revocation entry, uh, which is a slightly different way in which they do revocation. Um, and we believe that we can support that using our resources modular as, uh, uh, as is. I think the upshot of that is right out of the bat, uh, people who are currently using both non-Hyperledger Indie networks using the Vramo SDK or Hyperledger Indie networks will be able to get a much uh, faster, cheaper, simpler, more scalable ledger through which they can lift and shift and implement uh, whatever they're doing right now. And what's been quite interesting about this is we've been also been working with the Anon Preds working group to uh, essentially rewrite parts of the Anon Pred standards itself so that it no longer relies on Hyperledger Indy as the only ledger that can be used. I think that's quite exciting, the, the, the fact that like some of the work that we've been doing uh, is, is getting incorporated into aspects of the DID standards and the Anon Cred standards. And I think that's down to a lot of the work that our product and engineering team has been doing. Uh, but what this means is that it sort of also sets us up for uh, some of the more unique things that we've been wanting to do. For example, in terms of having a very scalable way of like revoking these digital credentials so that once they've been issued, for example, if you lose access to them, or if you lose your mobile phone, uh, the, the access to these things can be revoked and to then be able to build on top some of the payment rails that we speak about. Uh, we, we ultimately want to build like the commercial networks behind a lot of these identity exchanges. Um, um, the, the work that we've been doing on both the Veromo side of revocation registry, as well as the Anon Fred side sets us up for that. Yeah, and I think what's um, on the back of that angle, what's interesting is, uh, again, like the work you're talking about with Animo, and there's a lot of talk amongst the community following um, the post that Identity Women Clear put out. And I think that's where we're kind of, um, we have some some alignment and some things that we kind of think we can, with working with Veramo, working across the kind of ecosystem and community, we can really um, support some of the issues that have been identified there um, as well. Um Brilliant. And I think the, the other thing that we were going to talk briefly about was kind of what's going on with um, JSON LD and, and Tassos um, also kind of exploring that as well. I guess that's something which um, perhaps we can we can share a little bit on um, Tassos if you wanted to, to talk a little around that. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Um, we're actually uh, uh, under research of, uh, uh, of comparing uh, specs. Uh, we actually... Um, have our own spec on uh, our ledger and uh, providing JSON LD credential based on uh, upstream um, on the upstream packets. Um, actually, we're planning on uh, doing uh, a few contributions uh, upstream as well, um, based on uh, some older contributions, so we can support uh, different key representations, um, and that's actually. Uh, Good to go for us to support the um, You heard it here first. 
Brilliant. So I guess, yeah, to, to summarize, um, I think the kind of the working, the partnership we have here, so Veramu, um, the SDK working with Czech, essentially brings one of the most kind of like interoperable SDKs and ledger partnerships really out there because you can see it as having JSON, JSON LV credentials with basis list 2021, but also Anon cred credentials on a non indie chain with revocation as well. So it's quite exciting to see um, kind of what we're building here and, and what's coming over the next couple of months. Um, cool. I guess I would love to open up to questions. Um, there hasn't been any throughout, but if you, um, on your on your phone, if you hit um, request to speak, we can definitely have some questions here. If anyone has anything, um, we'd love to kind of open the conversation up. If there is anything from anyone. Um, no problem. I'm sure everyone's just deeply fascinated by what we've said here and, and say, say no more. Um, cool. Well, um, Anka, Tassos, Italo, Messia, thanks so much. Um, any kind of comments or closing thoughts or things you'd like to add? I just want to say, yeah, go ahead, Marcia. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, um, Thanks for, for inviting us and uh, for everyone else, check out the, the framework and uh, give us feedback. And uh, I have to say, we couldn't have made it this far uh, without the sort of, like a lot of this sounds like, you know, very complex and, you know, sure it's hard to understand, but um, honestly, we couldn't have gotten this far without the work that the Veramo team has been doing and the support and the highly collaborative nature in which uh, we've been working. And, uh, like I, I that, yeah, like <laughs> I think I think we owe a lot to them for how far we've gotten. And I think at the end of the day, we are all trying to take down Mark Zuckerberg, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the is the sort of rally cry that I sort of like you know put internally within our team. So uh, very excited about like you know increasing the usage of this kind of like more private and secure identity and data portability for people. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks as well. And um, I think we are in a, in a industry that needs to mature a lot. So all these problems with interoperability that we talk all the time, and it's very good to see um, uh, this collaboration happening. Um, and I think we need to have more than this, yeah. Definitely. Um, and all credit as well to, to Tassel, who has been driving this forward from the start, our, our senior blockchain engineer, who's really um, yeah, taking it, taking the lead on this, designed brilliant architecture and made it super easy to integrate with um, with Paramo from, from the Czech side. So um, Tassos, any last thoughts from you? Um, yeah, it's all uh, kudos to the Picaramo team first and then for us uh, doing uh, extensive research on those topics. So a lot more cool features to follow. Brilliant. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, this will be recorded, so we'll share this around with our community and, and share this with our partners um, across Telegram, Slack, and on our Discord channels as well. Um, and, yeah, looking forward to keeping everyone updated on the next steps, and, and hopefully we'll be joining um, Italio, Italio and Mercia and the Baramo team in the near future for some more updates. Um, so, yeah. Thanks everyone and thanks Matt for hosting this as well from the Czech side and yeah, bye for now. Thanks guys, thanks a thanks, thanks Mercia. Take it easy. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.